What's up, no code enthusiasts? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can build a form that will allow you to collect payment directly inside of the form. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you wanna learn more about that, do check out the links in this description of the video if you're watching on YouTube. And you might consider checking out our Airtable Crash Course. It will get you up to speed in the no-code world. But without further ado, let's jump into the heart of this video. We are talking all about putting together a form that's gonna take payments. It's pretty slick and to be Perfectly blunt, I struggled a lot with figuring out how to set up payments because even though a lot of payment software like PayPal or Stripe is really nice and efficient, it required that I jump in and manually create an invoice and then send the client the invoice. And I didn't always wanna to have to plug into a, you know website building software like Wix or something like that because a lot of times, you know, you don't even want to get into the madness of putting together a full on web page or website. Instead, you just want to be able to say, here's a link, go sign up for the thing and you can accept payment. Really nice, really efficient. And thankfully, JotForm is my tool of choice for doing this very thing. So jump on into my screen with me here and you'll see that I am here inside of JotForm. I love the form functions within JotForm and I use it myself in running my business all the time. And so if you wanted to build a form from scratch, you could just start right here, go with the classic form or the card form. The card form kind of like flips through one question at a time. Classic is more traditional. Either way, you can still get this functionality. So to start, you're gonna wanna go to the left-hand side of your screen and add a form element. And you can click on the second of the three headers here and switch on over to payments. And this is pretty incredible. You can see that JotForm allows you to process payment through a number of different payment processors. Whether you're on PayPal, AuthorizeNet, Stripe, Braintree, you know, all of these different payment opportunities or, or ways that you might be accepting payment, there are a number of different payment processors out there. So almost guaranteed that the payment processor you're working with is gonna be available here inside of the payments. Now I personally use Stripe and PayPal a lot inside of running Gap Consulting, so I can go with one of those and just click on that and it adds this form to, or this element rather, to your form. Now inside of here, as by default, you need to collect the first name, the last name, the card number, the security code, and of course the month and year of expiration. So this is pretty standard for any form. And you'll notice that when you add this in here, it says you haven't finished configuring the payment integration and you haven't added any products. So we're gonna to need to go into the actual settings of this particular uh, widget in order to get it all going. So first we need to connect it to our uh, you know, Stripe account. Again, if you're using a different account, Square, Braintree, whatever, the steps are gonna be pretty similar here. So go ahead and click on connect and it's gonna pop up here and ask you, you know, if you have multiple accounts, which ones you wanna to connect to, and you just simply have to allow it to do that here. Provide your password as required, and then log in. This way, uh, it knows that it's talking to your actual uh, Stripe account, and you'll get that successful symbol there. Now, if you are doing any testing here, and as you start to test this and set it up, I would strongly suggest that you, you know, set this to test mode to make sure that everything's configured appropriately. If you are operating in a different currency, you can select that currency here. I'm of course in USD, so I'll keep that. And then in terms of payment type, you'll see that you get a lot of different options. You can sell a product, a subscription, a defined amount, or collect donations. So pretty slick opportunities there. And then you can also expand for some additional gateway settings. So let's say, for example, you wanted to build a subscription, you would just click here. But in my case, I want it to actually be a specific you know, product. And so by selecting you know, product in here, then you have the opportunity to create the product and actually assign a dollar amount to the product. So generally speaking, this is probably the option you're gonna to wanna to go for or create subscription, but it's nice that JotForm has given you this much flexibility with the integration to Stripe. 
Now in this particular case, I'll create a new product. I'll name the product here. It'll be steak dinner. Uh, my price again will be 120 US dollars. Um, buy me dinner and you know, add whatever description you want. And if you want to drop in an image, you can do that. Scale the image. You can make it required, meaning that the product is mandatory in order for them to submit the form. Generally speaking, if you're you know, receiving payments, you'll probably want to make it required. And, uh, and you can go from there. Now, once I've saved this, I've now added this product to this particular widget, right? And so you can now see that when somebody goes to the form, this element is going to be clicked, steak dinner, they're buying me dinner, they're gonna pay me 120 bucks, and they've gotta put in their information here. So this is a really great way to have one consistent place for people to, again, go in, make a payment, and move things forward. Now to make this a little bit nicer, you'll probably want to add some additional things to the form. So you might say, for example, here's the form to buy my, to buy my dinner or buy me dinner. If you have a subheader, just a test, for example, I can put that in there. Great. All of that is you know, pretty straightforward. As is always the case with JotForm, you can customize this form in a number of ways, including changing the look and feel of it with colors and fonts and all of that. I'm not gonna go into the design elements of it, but I will add some extra pieces of information to this. Let's say, for example, I wanted to also um, have them supply their uh, email address so that I could send them a receipt, for example. I could say, enter your email, for your receipt. And of course, I could also make this particular piece of the form required as well. So I could go into the settings on that question, and there we go. Back inside of the settings for the form, you'll notice that you can do a lot more with this. You can add additional products, giving them choices so that they can choose which thing they wanna buy and pay for. Uh, you can also set up coupons and shipping information and tax. And you can also create an automatically generated invoice that will instantly go to, uh, to the cardholder as well. So there are a number of more advanced features here that you can certainly go into if you want to add a little bit more spice to the overall form. Now, before you actually deploy your live form, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to give it a couple of tests. So in order to do that, pop open your payment settings again and go to your mode and ensure that you are in test mode. You should see this little warning sign up here that says you're in sandbox mode and that you're enabled and that you can then disable sandbox mode when you're ready to move on. Now, once you're good with that, flip over to your publish tab and you can copy this link or open this tab and this is going to be the live version of the form. Again, we are in test mode, so no problems if we submit something, it's not actually gonna charge any cards. Now, in order to do this, let's go ahead and put some data into our form. I'll just put GP. A test card that you can use is gonna be all four twos. You can make up any CVC for this and bring in whatever month and year, so long as it's in the future, uh, and it will work just fine. And if I wanted to actually send myself, you know, a receipt here, I can include that and let's submit. And we see that the form went through just fine. And so this is the thank you page. Again, this is another part of the form that you can definitely customize if you want to fancy it up a little bit so that you have a better customer experience. So now that you have this all built out, you can then share the link to your form at any point with your clients who are ready to buy you a steak dinner or whatever the case may be. Again, you can add a number of different options here to the form and allow them to just pay for whatever you're looking for. That's a wrap for this one. If you are interested in learning more about this, I would strongly recommend attending our live webinar. We do a weekly webinar that goes into how you can use no code to run a better, more efficient business. So if that's of interest, check the description below this video and sign up for our next webinar training. We hold live training every week. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly 
And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.